بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله محمد وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله Shaykh Izzuddin? Naam. Shaykh Izzuddin ibn Abdus Salam was asked about one who prays and lengthens his prayer because of people. And he said, I hope that his action will not be invalid. All of this is in the case where the association of partners occurs in attributes of the action. However, if it happens in the source of the action so that one prays the obligatory, the obligatory prayer for the sake of Allah, exalted is he, and for the sake of people, then one's prayer is not acceptable because of the association of partners in the very source of the action. Just as showing off can be in an action, it can be in the abandonment of an action. al fubail ibn Iyad said, leaving an action because of people is showing off. And doing an action because of people is associating a partner with Allah. And sincerity is that Allah should protect one from both of them. The meaning of what he said, may Allah show mercy on him, is that whoever resolves on an act of worship and leaves it for fear that people may see it, then it is a form of showing off since he gave up an action because of people. However, if he gave it up in order to pray it in solitude, this is recommended and desirable unless it is an obligatory prayer or an obligatory zakah or he is a man of knowledge upon whom people model themselves for being open about an act of worship in these cases is better. Just as showing off invalidates action, so does seeking a good report which is that one does an act for Allah in solitude and then later tells people what one did. He said, may Allah bless him and grant him peace. Whoever makes others hear of his action, Allah will make others hear of him. And whoever makes a show of his action, Allah will make a show of him. The people of knowledge say that if he is a man of knowledge upon whom people model themselves and he mentions it in order to encourage the listeners to action so that they might act in accordance with it, then there is no harm in it. Al-Mirzabani Al said, may Allah show mercy on him, the one who prays needs four qualities so that his prayers, or so that his prayer will be raised up to Allah. Presence of heart, witnessing of the intellect, stillness in the basic elements, and submission of the limbs. Whoever prays without the presence of heart, then he is distracted. Whoever prays without the witnessing of the intellect is forgetful. Whoever prays without humility of the limbs is mistaken. Whoever prays without stillness in the basic elements is uncouth. And whoever prays with all these elements has fulfilled the prayer. But by his saying, may Allah bless him and grant him peace, actions are only by intentions. He meant acts of obedience aside from acts which are permissible. Al-Harith al-Muhasibi said, sincerity is not relevant for permitted actions because they are not acts of drawing near to Allah, nor do they lead to drawing near? For example, raising up buildings for no higher purpose, rather than the purpose of frivolity. However, if it is for a purpose such as mosques, aqueducts, and ribats, then they are desirable and recommended acts and not merely permissible. He said there is no sincerity in an act which is forbidden nor in something frowned upon, such as someone who looks at that which is not permitted for him to look at, claiming that he looks at it in order to reflect upon the workmanship of Allah, exalted is he. For example, one who looks at a beardless youth, 
There is no sincerity in this. Indeed, there is no act of drawing near to Allah in it at all. He said truthfulness in the attribute of the slave is in the matching of the secret and the public, the outward and the inward. Truthfulness is realized by realizing all of the stations and states, so much so that sincerity needs truthfulness and truthfulness does not need anything. Since the reality of sincerity is intending Allah, exalted is he, by the act of worship. One may intend Allah by the prayer, but be neglectful of the presence of the heart in it. Truthfulness is intending Allah, exalted is he, by the act of worship along with the presence of the heart with him. Every true one is sincere, but not every sincere one is true. That is the meaning of union and separation, since he has separated from other than Allah and united with the presence of by Allah. It is the meaning of isolation from what is other than Allah and adornment with the presence before Allah, glorious and exalted is he. He is saying, may Allah bless him and grant him peace. Actions are only by intentions, carries the possibilities of the soundness of actions are only and rendering the action sound, actions sound or the acceptance of actions or the perfection of actions. This was what Imam Abu Hanifa took, may Allah be merciful to him. One excludes from actions those of the category of removal, such as removing dirt, returning property obtained through extortion and loans, conveying a present, etc. For the soundness of these actions does not depend upon the intention having been made authentic, rather the reward for them depends upon having intended them as acts of drawing near. For example, one who feeds an, his animal, he does not so, he does so in obedience to the command of Allah, exalted is he. He will be rewarded, but if he intends by it preservation of his wealth, then there is no reward for that. As Al-Harafi said, the exception to that case is the horse of a man fighting jihad for when he ties it up in the way of Allah if it drinks and he did not intend to give it water he will be rewarded for that as is narrated in Sahih al-Bukhari and similarly for one's wife also look locking the door and extinguishing the lamp up and going to sleep if one intends by them obedience to the command of Allah one is rewarded and if one intends some other thing, then one will not. You must know that intention is a word for purpose. It is said, may Allah intend good for you, i.e. may he purpose it for you. Intention in the Sharia is to, purp is to purpose a thing coupled, coupled with the doing of it. If one purposes it and then does it later, it is resolved. Intention is made a part of the Sharia in order to distinguish customary actions from acts of worship or to distinguish one act of worship from another. An example of the former is sitting in the mosque, which is customary, intended, customarily intended for rest. But it could also be meant as worship if the intention is for etikaf. That which distinguishes custom from worship is intention. Similarly, one customarily intends by a complete washing of the body to clean the body. But also the intention can be as an act of worship, i.e. ghusl. That which distinguishes between these two cases is the intention, which the Prophet ﷺ indicated when he asked about the man who fought in order to show off, the man who fought defensively and the man who fought courageously as to which of them is fighting in the way of Allah, exalted is he. He said, whoever fights so that the word of Allah should be the uppermost, then he is in the way of Allah, exalted is he. An example of the latter, which is distinguishing between the different degrees of worship, 
is one who prays for raka, raka, by which he could intend the midday prayer or sunnah prayers. And that which distinguishes these two is the intention. Similarly, freeing a slave can be intended as, expia as an expiation for a wrong action or for other purposes such as expiation of vows which have been broken, etc. And here, that which distinguishes them is the intention. رياض الصالحين أبو إبراهيم عبد الله ابن أبي عوف reported that on one of the days when he came face to face with the enemy the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم waited until the sun had declined and then stood up and said O people do not be too eager to meet the enemy and ask Allah for well-being when you do meet them, be steadfast, know that the garden lies under the shadow of the swords. Then the Prophet wasallam said, O Allah, send the down of the book and the mover of the clouds and the vanquisher of companies, defeat them and help us against them. The chapter on truthfulness. And Allah Almighty says, O you who believe, fear Allah and be with the truthful. And the Almighty says, truthful men and truthful women. And the Almighty says, being true to Allah would be better for them. Ibn Mas'ud related that the Prophet ﷺ said, truthfulness leads to piety and piety leads to the garden. <clears throat> A man should be truthful until he is written down as truthful in the sight of Allah. Lying leads to deviance and deviance leads to the fire. A person lies to the point that he is written down as a liar in the sight of Allah. Abu Muhammad al-Hasan ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhuma said, I memorized from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, abandon anything that gives you doubt for what gives you no doubt. Truthfulness is peace of mind and lying is doubt. Abu Sufyan Sakhr ibn Harb said in a long hadith concerning what happened with Heracli Heraclius, Heraclius said, what does he order you to do? I replied, he says, worship Allah alone and do not associate anything with him and abandon what our ancestors said. He commands us to pray, speak the truth, to be chaste and to maintain ties of kinship. Abu Thabit, and it is said, Abu Sa'id and Abu Walid, Sahal ibn Hunayf, who was at Badr, reported that the Prophet wasallam said, if someone asks Allah Almighty for martyrdom with true sincerity, Allah will raise him to the level of martyrs, even if he dies in his bed. Abu Huraira reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, one of the Prophets, may Allah um, uh, alayhi wasallam, went on an expedition and said to his people, a man who has contracted a marriage, a man who has contracted a marriage with a woman and wants to consummate it, but has not yet done so, should not go with me, nor should anyone who has a built a house and not yet raised its roof, nor anyone who has brought, bought some sheep or pregnant she camels and is waiting for them to give birth. So he went on the expedition and approached the town at the time of the Asr prayer or about that time. He said to the son, you are under command and I am under command. O Allah, hold it back for us. And it was held back until Allah gave him victory. He gathered the booty and it, i.e. the fire came to consume it, but it did not consume it. He said, some of you have stolen from the beauty. Uh, from the booty, um, a man from every tribe should come and give allegiance. One man's hand stuck to his hand and he said, the theft is among you, your tribe should give me allegiance. The hands of two or three men stuck to his hand and he said, the theft is among you. So they brought, so they brought a head made of gold looking like the head of a cow and put it down and the fire came and consumed it. 
booty was not lawful for anyone before us, then Allah made the booty lawful for us. Allah saw our weakness and incapacity, and so he made it lawful for us. Abu Khalid Hakim ibn Hizam reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the seller and the buyer have the option to withdraw as long as they have not yet separated. If they speak the truth and make things clear, they will be blessed in their sale. If they conceal things and lie, the blessing of, the con con of their transaction will be wiped out. Chapter on Watchfulness. Allah Almighty says, he who sees you stand up to pray and your movements with those who prostrate. And the Almighty says, He is with you wherever you are. The Almighty says, Allah, Him from whom nothing is hidden, either on earth or in heaven. Allah Almighty says, Your Lord is always lying in wait. And the Almighty says, Allah knows the eyes deceit and the people's and people's breasts conceal. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu said, one day when we were sitting with the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there appeared before us a man whose clothes were exceedingly white and whose hair was exceedingly black. No trace of travel could be seen on him and none of us knew him. He walked up and sat down by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, resting his knees against his and placing the palms of his hands on his thighs, he said, O oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Islam is to testify that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. To perform the prayers, to pay the zakat, to fast in Ramadan and to make the pilgrimage to the house if you are able to do so. He said, you have spoken the truth. And we were we amazed at him asking him and then saying that he had spoken the truth. He said, then tell me about belief. He said it is to believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers and the last day and to believe in the decree, both its good and its evil. He said, you have spoken the truth. He said, then tell me about Ihsan. He said, it is to worship Allah as though you could see him for while you do not see him, he sees you. He said, then tell me about the A. Ah. He said, the one asked about it knows no more than a, a, no more about it than the asker. He said, then tell me about its signs. He said that a slave girl will give birth to her mistress and that you will see barefooted, destitute herdsmen competing in constructing lofty buildings. He then left, but I stayed on a while. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Umar, do you know who the questioner was? I said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, it was Jibreel who came to teach you your religion. Abu Dhar Jundub ibn Junada and Abu Abdul Rahman Mu'ad ibn Jabal is, said that the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, fear Allah wherever you are and follow, follow up an evil action with a good action which will wipe it out and treat people well. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma said, one day I was behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, boy, I will teach you some words. Be careful regarding Allah and he will take care of you. Be careful regarding Allah and you will find him in front of you. When you ask, ask Allah. And when you seek help, seek help from Allah. Know that if the whole community were to gather together to help you with something, they would not be able to help you in any way unless Allah had written that for you. And if they were to gather to harm you in some way, they would not be able to harm you except with something which Allah had written for you. The pens have been lifted and the pages are dry. In an another variant than uh, that of at tirmidhi be careful regarding Allah and you will find him before you. Recognize Allah in ease and he will recognize you in hardship. Know that whatever misses you could have never hit you and whatever hits you could have never missed you. Know that victory comes with fortitude, rescue with constriction and ease with hardship. Anas said, you do actions which you see as having more, no more than a hair's weight of significance while in the time of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we used to consider them deadly dangerous. Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah Almighty is jealous 
And the jealousy of Allah Almighty is on the account of a man coming to something that Allah has made unlawful for him. <laughs> Abu Huraira heard that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, three children of Israel were respectively leprous, bald and blind. Allah wanted to put them to test, so he sent an angel to them. He came to the leper and said, what would you like best? He said, a good complexion and a clear skin and the thing that I have which make most people find me unclean to be taken from me. He wiped him and his impurity left him and he gave him a good complexion. He said, what property do you like best? He said, camels or he said, cattle. The relator is uncertain and he gave him a pregnant she camel. He said, may Allah bless you in it. He then came to the bald one and said, what would you like best? He said, a good head of hair and to have what people consider distasteful about me removed from me. So he touched him and removed what he had and gave him thick hair. He said, what property do you like best? He said, cattle. So he gave him a pregnant cow and he said, may Allah bless you in it. Then he went to the blind man and said, what would you like best? He said, uh, that Allah returned my sight to me so that I can see people. He touched him and Allah returned his sight to him. And he said, what property do you like best? He said sheep and he gave him a pregnant sheep. These animals all gave birth and produced offspring. One had a valley full of camels, the other a valley full of cattle and the other a valley full of sheep. Then he went to the leper in his own form and appearance and said, I am a poor man who has lost his means on his journey. Today I can seek none but Allah and then you. I ask you by the one who gave you good complexion and good skin and property for a camel so that I can complete my journey. He said, I have many obligations. He said, I seem to recognize you. Were you not a leper that people found unclean and poor and then Allah was generous to you? He said, I inherited this property, elder son from elder son. He said, if you are a liar in your claim, may Allah return you as you were. He then went to the bald man in his own form and appearance and said to him the same as he had said to the other. And he replied him in the same way. He said, if you are a liar, may Allah return you as you were. Then he went to the blind man in his own form and appearance and said to him, I'm a poor man who has lost his means on his journey. Today I can seek none but Allah and then you. I ask you by the one who returned your sight to you for a sheep so that I can complete my journey. He said, I was blind and Allah restored my sight to me. So take what you want and leave what you want. By Allah, I will not be hard on you about anything which you take for Allah, the mighty, the exalted. He said, Keep your property. You have been tested and Allah is pleased with you and angry with your companions. A variant of Al-Bukhari has, I will not praise you for, i.e. for leaving what you need. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Bismillah. The best neighbor, Abdullah ibn Amir bin Al-As radiallahu an. Reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, The best of companions in the sight of Allah Almighty is the best of them towards his companion. And the best of neighbours in the sight of Allah is the best of them towards his neighbour. The righteous neighbour. Nafi' ibn Abdul Harith reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Part of the happiness of the Muslim man includes a spacious dwelling, righteous neighbor, and a good mount. The bad neighbor. Abu Huraira radiallahu an said, Part of the supplication of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was, O oh Allah, I seek refuge with you from an evil neighbor in the eternal world. A, a neighbor in this world can be changed. Abu Musa radiallahu an reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, The final hour will not come until a man kills his neighbor, his brother and his father. A person should not injure his neighbor. Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira radiallahu an said, The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, A certain woman prays in the night, fasts in the day, acts and gives sadaqah, but injures her neighbor with her tongue.
the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, there is no good in her. She is one of the people of the fire. They said another woman prays the prescribed prayers and gives bits of curd as sadaqa and does not injure anyone. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, she is one of the people of the garden. Omara ibn Ghurab reported that an aunt of his told him that she asked Aisha radiallahu anha, um, um al mu'minin if a woman's husband desires her and she refuses to give her to him, either because she's angry or not eager, is there anything wrong in that? Yes, she replied. Part of his right over you is that if he desires you, when you are on a saddle, you must not refuse him. She said, I also asked her if one of us is menstruating and she and her husband only has uh, only have a single cover. What should he do? She replied, she should wrap her wrapper around her and sleep with him. He can't have what he he can have what is above it. I will tell you what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did on one of his nights with me. I had cooked some barley and made a loaf for him. He came in, stopped at the door, and then went into the mosque. When he wanted to sleep, he closed the door, tied up the water skin, turned the cup over and put out the light. I waited for him and he ate the loaf. He did not go until I fell asleep. Later he felt he he felt the cold and came and got me up. Warm me, warm me, he said. I said, I am menstruating. He said, then cover your thighs. So I uncovered so then uncover your thighs. So I uncovered my thighs and, and he put his cheek and head on my thighs until he was warm. Then a pet sheep belonging to our neighbor came in. I went and looked and then took the load away. I disturbed the Prophet wasallam, and he woke up. So I chased the sheep to the door. The Prophet wasallam said, Take what you got of your loaf and do not injure your neighbor's sheep. Abu Hurairah reported that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, A person whose neighbors are not safe from his evil will not enter the garden. A woman should not disdain anything which her female neighbor gives her, even if it is only the hooves of a sheep. Amr ibn Mu'adh al Ashali reported that his grandmother said, The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Believing women, do not let any of you women disdain her female neighbor's gift, even if it is only a burned sheep's hoof. Abu Hurairah reported that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Muslim women, Muslim women, a woman should not disdain her female neighbor's gift, even if it is only a sheep's hoof. The neighbors complained. Abu Hurairah said, a man said, Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I have a neighbor who does me harm. He said, go and take your things out into the road. He took his things out into the road. People gathered around him and asked, what's the matter? He replied, a neighbor of mine injures me and I mentioned it to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He told me, take your things out into the road. They began to say, oh Allah, curse him, oh Allah, disgrace him. When the man heard this, he came out to him and said, go back to your home, by Allah, I will not harm you. Abu Juhayfa said, a man complained to the Prophet wasallam about his neighbor. The Prophet wasallam said, take your bags and put them in the road and whoever passes them, will curse him. Everyone who passed him began to curse that neighbor. Then he went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, how many people I met? He said, 
the curse of Allah is on top of their curse. Then he told the one who has complained, you have enough or words to that effect. Jabir said, a man came to the Prophet وسلم, to complain to him about the enmity of his neighbor. While he was sitting between the corner and the maqam, the Prophet وسلم, approached with a man who was wearing a white garment. They went to the maqam where they were praying for the dead. He went up to the Prophet وسلم, and said, May my mother and my father be your ransom. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who is this man I see with you wearing the white garment? You saw him? He asked. Yes, the man replied. He said, then you have seen much good. That was Jibreel alayhi salam, the messenger of my Lord. He kept on recommending that I treat my neighbors well until I thought that he would order me to make them my heirs. Someone who harms his neighbor until he forces him to leave. Thauban said, when two men cut each other off for more than three days and one of them dies, then they both die while, relation, while relations between them were severed and both of them are destroyed. There is no man who wrongs his neighbor to the extent that he forces him until he makes him leave his home when he is not destroyed, who leave his home who is not destroyed, a Jewish neighbor. Mujahid said, I was with Abdullah ibn Amr while his slave was skinning a sheep. He said, boy, when you finish, start with the, with the Jewish neighbor. A man there exclaimed, Jewish, may Allah correct you. He replied, I heard the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recommend that we treat our neighbors well until we feared or we thought that he would order us to make them our heirs. Chapter 7, Generosity and Orphans. Generosity. Abu Huraira radiallahu an said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked, which people are the most generous? He replied, the most generous of them in the sight of Allah are those with the most taqwa. They said, this is not what we are asking about. He said, the most generous of the people was Yusuf, the Prophet of Allah, son of the Prophet of Allah, who was the son of the intimate friend of Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salam. They said, that is not what we, what we are asking about. He said, are you asking about those of Arab origin? Yes, they replied. He said, the best of you in the Jahiliyyah is the best of you in Islam when you have understanding from Allah. Kindness to both the pious and the deviant. Mundir at tawri reported what Muhammad ibn Ali ibn al-Hanafiyya said about, is the repayment of kindness anything except kindness? He said, it is not denied to either the pious or the deviant. Jazakallahu khair Muhammad wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.